What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Sakina, and I'm back for another review. This is my review for The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. This is season one, episode 10. I wasn't gonna film this review for real. I was just gonna wait till the morning, but I was like, look, I gotta do Married at First Sight. They both come on on the same night. This episode of Married at First Sight is three hours, so I'm like, let me get this out the way. I could take some more notes on Married at First Sight in the morning and just, you know, get this just one hour show out the way. So anyway, let's just talk about it. Oh, quick skin update. Nothing's peeling. I had a little flakiness on my nose. That's it. But anyway, we get into the episode. So the episode opens up with Jen. She's talking. She was, I don't know who she was talking to, but basically she was blaming the whole blow up at the party on Whitney because, you know, she told her the story about Mary saying that the brunettes were scared of her. But my thing is, sis, you need to blame yourself because your actions is what took it to a whole nother level. So I don't understand why you're putting all the blame on Whitney. And I mean, she put a little blame on herself, but not enough, especially once we get down to the end of the episode. She says that she feels more depressed because Sharif isn't talking to her. He hasn't been home. So, you know, she really in her feelings because he giving her the cold shoulder for real. I knew that was going to happen, though. I already said that when they didn't leave together at the end of his party and he was talking to fine-ass Sharif Jr., I was like, yeah, he's definitely pissed. And I'm sure he's not going to be all lovey-dovey with her when he get home. We see that Whitney... And Heather, they get together and Heather, not Heather, but Whitney is in her feelings because she feels like everything just went left. And she said that she has mixed emotions about what happened that night. And she hated that everybody jumped into the situation. But I'm like, Whitney, did you forget that you asked Heather to help you out? You wanted her to intervene because you were so nervous. And on top of that, not only did you ask her, but you were way too drunk to even get the damn story out. So yeah, you could be mad at Heather all you want, but you was beating around the bush, yet you was claiming to be this straight shooter. Like, no girl, you was nervous as hell. So Heather wants Jen to know that the brunettes are fake. And it's just like, now you can really start to see a division with the group, like a, a big divide. And it's definitely because Heather is pushing it to be that way. Now, y'all know that's my girl, but I clearly see what she's doing here. She wants Jen to know that, you know, the brunettes do not have her best interest at heart, basically. And Whitney is like, well, I want you to tell her that and, you know, let her know that that's where I was trying to come from. But Heather was like, uh, you know, that's not going to be easy. Exactly. Because we all know that Jen goes too far when she gets information that she don't want to hear. They really want to get down to Jen's behavior and try to figure out why she's acting the way that she acts. Um, It's plain and simple. We all know it's really stemming from her marriage. So I don't understand why they don't get that. But, you know, they get down to the root of it or, you know, try to get down to the root of it later. My issue is y'all are taking this Mary told the brunettes thing to a whole nother level. Never, never is it this serious to where it's causing a divide in the group. Never. Okay. Because the girl said that they was afraid of her so the fuck what like y'all are doing the most here like i cannot then we get born meredith and seth you know I'm, I'm tired of seeing them to be honest you know they going great all right that's good now we talk about sharif's birthday party meredith is still saying that somebody is lying she ain't never once said that she was scared of jen so she don't know where they heard that from she's also upset that whitney is going around you know, telling her that Jen has these insinuations. And she was like, you know, me and my husband, we trying to get on the right track. So I don't need that type of bullshit in my life. So then we see Lisa and her husband talking about the situation. Lisa saying the same thing. I ain't never said that I was scared of Jen. So I don't understand where y'all getting that from. She was talking shit about Whitney and how she was twerking at Sharif's birthday party. But last week on Twitter, I seen that Whitney shared a picture of Oh, girl, doing the splits with her. So how you talking shit, but yeah, you busting splits in front of somebody's husband. And y'all talking about all this Mormonism and all this like conservative type shit. Girl, please. People want to shake ass and do whatever the hell they want to do. Then, I mean, it is what it is. Y'all at a party. They was all dancing together. It wasn't like she was dancing on the man. Like, girl, get the hell over it. You just real judgmental and you do the damn most. We see that Jen is talking to her assistant about the whole situation. You know, she don't like the way that the party had turned into uh, a bad time, basically. 
But I'm just like, I don't think that you understand. It's bothering me that you don't understand that you're the reason why the whole drama of it all escalated. You did the most. You threw the glass. You tried to assault the balloons on your way out. Like, girl, who are you? Who are you? Sh like, you shaking the table. Don't shake unless you're ready to get shook because she just gives me, like, somebody's supposed to be scared of her when she lash out, but it, it, no, sis, ain't nobody scared of you, okay? Ain't nobody scared of you. You demanding that y'all leave, looking a damn fool because you the only one big mad and everybody like, girl, what what is all of this about? So you need to take accountability for your actions and understand that the reason why the party went sour is because of you. Mary, how do you have all of this money? Y'all have multiple properties, restaurants. You even gained your grandpa pop as a husband. Like you have a church, like all of these things, right? Yet the one thing that you need, one of the things that you need the most is a wardrobe. Like why don't you have closet organization? Like why do you live in a hoarding space with all of these clothes that you hold near and dear to your heart and which you can't put together and another thing that like stood out to me she said that they have clothes everywhere in their house um one of the rooms that they have um that has clothes in it or whatever is robert senior's bedroom y'all stay together y'all sleep in the same room robert senior's room girl never never will i be living unhappily uh-uh, and, and marrying my grandpa pop. And I mean, y'all marry, y'all might as well sleep in the same bed. You said you was fine, to, you was fine with, why y'all ain't in the same bed? Okay, whatever. So then, yeah, that was just bothering me. Like, I'm, I'm tired of seeing her in her closet room. But anyway, um, she get on the phone with Whitney. And Whitney tell her about the party and how she told jen there and when uh when uh, girl what mary was like um even i know that the party was not the greatest time to drop that information hello i mean damn you could have waited i mean it wasn't no hot tea anyway so it really could have waited until the day before the party or the day after because it wasn't anything to go and run and tell, especially because the brunettes is saying that it wasn't true anyway. So it's like, yeah, I mean, you fucked up or helped mess up the party because of what? No reason. So yeah, um, Whitney just wanted to, you know, ask Mary again. So did that really happen? Did the girls really say that? Mary was like, yeah, I don't lie about anything. Oh, okay. Yeah, Mary, you don't lie about nothing, okay? Yeah, like like we said in that last video. How you get the coin, sis? Tell us the real truth. I don't believe that the girls are scared of Jen. I said this already. Now, I do feel like they probably just don't want to deal with the antics of it all. Like, you know, her reactions is just too much. Be like, all right, I don't even want to tell her this because I know she's going to do the most and blow it out of proportion. So I can see them doing that. But I don't think they scared of her to where they feel like, you know, if I tell her this information, she's going to jump on me. So, yeah, that's just how I feel about it. Now, we see that, um, I got the notes on my laptop down here. But anyway, we see that Heather is down at the beauty lab. You know, the second location is, is on the up and up. She did say that she doesn't believe that she would be able to even open a business when she was married to her ex-husband because the focus was on her family and being a good wife and all of that. So that wouldn't even been um, a, a factor when she was married. It couldn't have happened. Um, she was saying that, or one of her workers was saying that they wanted to you know, do salary and all of that. Basically, they want to get paid for it and all of that. And Heather was saying, yeah, we can do that. And eventually, she wants to get off of receiving money from her husband. I said, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. Especially if he got unlimited money as, as, as coming from your mouth. You know, ma'am. You collect his money, too. You collect your own and collect his. Uh-uh. Girl, set yourself up set your kids up i know that's their dad but still girl no ma'am mm -mm. no run run that check up sis 
You're doing it wrong, Heather. I, I I understand. I like that you get your own bag. I admire that about you. I really love that because you independent as hell. However, run that check up. Run up that unlimited money. Girl, that. Yeah. So then we see the brunettes and their husbands go out to dinner. Boring. They are wearing the same outfit because they're just alike. It's just the different color. Same same outfit, same suit. Um, they announced that they're back together. Congratulations. I'm proud of them because they're actually focusing now on where they're going to live. And they're going to actually live together. So I'm, I'm actually really happy to hear that. Shout out to them. My thing is, how long was y'all separated? I would like to know the timeline of separation because, yeah, it just seemed on TV. Like, I know this is all, like, based on episodes and throughout you know, months and all of that. But I want to know exactly how long they were separated because, yeah, it just, it don't seem that long on TV. But I'm sure it was longer than what we seen. So then they talk about the party and basically they don't have time for the childish games. Lisa said that she doesn't really know if Whitney is telling the truth because she just feels like she's a liar. So she doesn't know if Whitney is telling the truth about Jen's insinuations about Meredith getting down with the get down with somebody else, her side piece. So uh, one thing that kind of irritated me is when Lisa addressed the girls as those people. She said something along the lines of like, I don't deal with those people. That's a trigger word for me coming from white people. I don't want to hear white people use that phrase because that that automatically like puts my alerts up and I'm like what the fuck do you mean you people like bitch don't try it I don't, I don't play that phrase coming from white people no ma'am we get down to this spa the spa is real interesting okay very interesting um it's not the ideal spa that you would think of um yeah uh, apparently I guess it was like three hours away from where they live and Whitney invited um, Jen and Heather there. She wanted it to be out in the boonies so she wouldn't up and run somewhere, you know, get in a car and go home. So, I mean, it worked. But, yeah, this is not the ideal spa. Like, no, ma'am, this is not what I had in mind. I wanted 24 karat gold mask, according to Jen. Jen was real rude when she got in there. She was like, um, I'm just trying to figure out if I came to the right place. Uh, are my friends here? Okay, I'm just trying to make sure y'all won't go murder me. I was like, I'm like you ain't have to say that like if you was thinking that okay but you ain't have to say that to that lady because that's that's offensive but anyway um they end up going up to these hot tubs and the hot tubs are really nice like i i like once you got up to the mountain it looked real nice it looked like okay it was worth a little 35 dollar or 16 dollar hot bath that you was gonna get jen her outfits always are just extra like i understand you know you got people who are just fashionistas but like I mean, she thought she was going to the spa. I'm trying to give her the Benny, y'all. I'm really trying to give her the Benny. Benefit of the doubt. Um, but yeah, sometimes it's just a lot. Like the fur. Like, why did you have fur going to the spa, though? Like, do you know most of the spas that you go to, you wearing robes or, yeah, like a bathing suit. So why do you feel like you needed to bring fur? But anyway, they get in these tubs, right? It's natural water and all of that. I was feeling it. I like that. But anyway, they get in there. They want to use this opportunity to apologize about the whole party situation. I feel like I'm giving y'all real low energy. I do apologize about that. Let me try to spruce it up a little bit. You know, it ain't it's, it's 12 at night, but it, you know, it ain't that late. I still got a little energy in me. I need to give y'all a little bit more. Hold on. So Whitney ruins the party. No, <laughs> but um, Whitney did apologize for, you know, Growing in the party basically and jen was trying to tell heather because heather was trying to take some responsibility too but jen was like uh-uh no 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 i don't need you to be trying to take no blame heather this was all your cousin okay whitney you need to take the fall and i feel like i mean heather yeah you didn't do anything wrong you just let her know faster than whitney did so i yeah why are you apologizing jen is upset because Whitney knows that she's basically trying to save her marriage and then for Whitney to go and tell this information it was just the wrong place and I do agree Whitney I, we already all said this girl you picked the wrong place to tell the to tell the tea okay don't do that again special events are off limits okay you wait to the day before or the day after don't do the shit the day of please so then Jen goes and like tries to blame the uh try to blame Whitney for the whole 
shit show basically and then Whitney was like I mean yeah I, I said what I said but I also wasn't the one who threw the glass hello bitch what are you talking about yeah Jen you doing too much no and she what did she say she said y'all made me throw the glass when I tell y'all I don't like people who don't take accountability and don't see the wrongdoings of their own actions girl what do you mean y'all made me throw the glass? No, yo, yo ass could have took the information and just stored it in until after the party. That's all you had to do. Mary is that much of a trigger to where she's coming in between you and having a good time with your husband and celebrating his birthday and what you haven't done in years. She's that important. You're that pressed. Her name infuriates you that much. Girl, you need to find something else to do. Like, that, you need to go find something else to do because that shit just does not make sense to me. I know I'm here with Whitney, baby. You took it to the next level. Jen getting mad. She crying. She frustrated. She splashed water at the producers. And the producers is like, what is you doing that for? And she was like, that's what happens when you film me in a goddamn bathtub. So she gets up. She storms off. And Heather is like, look. Can you just be her friend? She's talking to Whitney. Like, can you just be her friend? Because she's obviously going through a lot right now. Like, she's clearly hurting. Just just go with it right now. Just be a friend. Because Whitney was like, no, like, this is her. This is the reason why the party went left. Because look at how she reacts to stuff. Like, no. Heather was trying, I mean, Whitney was trying to hold her feet to the fire, but Heather was like, nah, just be her friend because there's obviously some issues going on. Her husband ain't been home in four days and it was just a, a, a whole thing for her. She's going through it. So she comes back, Jen comes back and gets in the pool and all of that. Heather takes this time to kind of flip it and make it about her. She was like, you know, I feel like you want to be friends with the brunettes and you know what Lisa has done to me. And she was like, you know, my fear is losing you. And she doesn't want to be a yes man. She said because, you know, like like she shared with us last week, she finally stood up to her husband and told him no, and he left her. So she has PTSD from that. She's afraid that if she is honest with Jen, then she may get up and walk out. Now, that's a personal problem, but that's also associated with the way that Jen acts and reacts to certain situations. So... You know, Heather, you did make that about you, but I'm glad that you spoke your truth and said what you said. You know, her and Jen worked it out. Whitney apologized again and tried to come and give her a hug. Jen is still upset. She said, you know, she'll accept the apology, but she's still not over it. I said, girl, talking about... She is not the reason why. I'm going to repeat it again. Before I, before I even finish the statement, I'm going to repeat the shit again. Whitney is not the reason why your husband did not come home, okay? You are... You are. It, it, it's, she's just too much. She's too much. She's too much. She is too much. That is why the blondes are my favorites. Because they're more logical thinkers. Um, They don't really do the most. Like, Jen, extra as hell. The brunettes, born as fuck. The blondes, they just want to have fun, okay? Period. Uh, Mary, girl, stay in your closet. Because you really don't belong here. Speaking of the boring brunettes, they go to this event. Bore. I don't even know why they was there. I remember uh, Lisa said something about drinking tequila. Boring. Like, it, it just, it was just shade to make it seem like they're above the girls and their drama. These, these are the type of people that I like to be around. I was just like, y'all bitches really boring for real. So, okay, do what y'all do in y'all boring ass situations and scenes. Then we get down to the last scene. The last scene is Sharif. He finally then came home after four days. Jen is nervous because they got to talk. And she's like, uh, like, he might leave me this time. So I'm, I'm a little nervous. So they sit on the side of the bed and they have the talk. He wanted to know, you know, why are you doing all of that? What's up with all the reactions? Like, we didn't have no idea what was going on. And, you know, Jen want to know why he ain't came home. He was like, look, because I was irritated. You know, you doing all that drinking and shit. Like, I, I can't deal with that. I'd rather just step away and then come back when I got my mind right. Because I guess he was going to trump her off or he was able to leave her. So, you know, he had to get his mind right and come on home. So, yeah, she was saying that she drinks because she's trying to numb the pain. She's upset. So, I'm glad that this is where she finally decided to let him know how she truly feels. 
she's hurt because he missed her dad's funeral. He was not there. She's still grieving from the loss of her dad. And, you know, he's just, he's not there. He's not present. He's lonely. Uh, she's lonely. And to be honest, as she's saying all of this, I didn't really feel that Sharif was really, was really like processing it. He was giving me very vague. Um, he even told a story about himself, like something happened in football and he came to a dark place and he was drinking. So basically, I guess he was just trying to identify with what she was going through. But I don't think he understands how fucked up that was for you not to show up for your wife. You chose your job over your wife. She had to make the decision to pull the plug on her dad by herself. Like she's doing all of this without the support of her husband. Like, sir, I don't understand. Like nothing that he says will ever make sense to, to any of us really as to why you were not there. Come on now. Come on, you seem like a real logical man, a real level-headed man. And for you not to show up to your wife's dad's funeral, like that that was just fucked up. I didn't like that. And then he was saying, um, what do you need me to do? Well, I tell you that would have pissed me off. Be present, motherfucker. Like, what do you mean? Don't ask me no stupid ass questions like that when I'm telling you I'm alone and I need you here. The 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 answer to that is simple. Nigga, be here. Duh. That pissed me off. I was like, oh, mm -mm. and that's why I was like, I don't know. I don't know, Sharif. Like, I don't like these responses. It was getting on my nerves. It was really pissing me off. And it's just like, I mean, he apologized. But it's just like, for me, I need to see some action because, yeah, I wasn't really feeling, I wasn't feeling his responses for real. So, um, yeah, but that was the end of the episode. Like I said, I'm proud of Jen for saying what she needed to say. I really do hope that she gets some therapy because her feelings are valid. Her feelings are very valid. She just needs to work on how she responds to stuff because the, the way that she goes about shit, it makes her not likable. She's very extra and it's, 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 it's exhausting, okay? We tired. We tired of the Jen Shaw antics, like cut it out, go seek therapy, and, you know, work through your issues, girl, because you really got some, I mean, you're going through some tough things. That's something that, that is very hard to get over, especially when your husband is not there to support you. But anyway, yes, like I said, that was the end of my review. Y'all let me know what y'all thought or, yeah, y'all thought about the episode. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel, and I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.